everyone. Well, it is hard to believe, but I am finally going to make some hot process soap for you. I started making hot process in 2008, and I made it for a year to two years before I basically quit soap making for about a year. And then I came back to do cold process, and I loved it, and I've not come back to hot process since then. So it has been since 2009 or 2010. So I have all my oils for one loaf. I obviously could do two using this size of a slow cooker, but I'm going to melt these down and I'm going to put this to the side and work on another batch instead of doing a time lapse because I need my countertop. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back to you when this is all melted. Alright, so the slow cooker is currently off. The oils are about 155 to 160. My life solution is actually quite cooled off. Um, it's still warm to the touch. It's 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and add my lye solution. The nice thing about the hot process method is that your oils and your um, lye solution does not have to be quite as cooled down. So I'm just gently stirring for a moment here. This is pretty weird. It really has been a long time. I have been referencing my simple and natural soap making book by Jan Berry to kind of have a little bit of a refresher. I'm going to tap out the air bubbles the best I can here. And I want to try to be very careful not to run this stick blender a lot on the bottom because I don't want to scratch it. When I was making hot process soap back in the day, I had a plastic attachment. down a little bit fuller pot would have been better so keep that in mind if you decide to make hot process It's getting quite nice and thick. I'll give it a, just a bit more. Alright, I'm going to stop there and let this do its thing. I'm going to turn it on to low. And let it start cooking. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes and I want to give you a quick peek. It's not ideal to lift the lid and let the moisture out, but I'm going to do so for this video. This is not hot, so I'm just going to give you a little peek. See all that steam leaving out? I'm going to close that up and we let it continue to cook. Alright, so we look to be in pretty good shape here. It's been another 20 minutes so full cook at this point has been 50 minutes. I'm going to give this a stir. You can see how gelatinous it is. I love this. I forgot how much I enjoyed the smell of the hot process soap. Okay, that's looking pretty good. The more we stir in these harder bits as it dries off, the um, those will kind of remain in the soap. So I'm going to take the temperature. 
This is 200 degrees. And I want this to cool down to about 180 before I add in anything. So I have just turned off my slow cooker. And I'm going to put the lid on and we are just going to wait for a while. While we wait for the purpose of this whole process, I'm going to take out just a little bit of soap here. And I'm going to dissolve it a bit in a little Dixie cup. It's a little stuck to the old finger here because it got very cold in a hurry. Okay, it's getting all soapy in my little cup. And then I'm going to get a pH strip. I am going to, I know you can't really see this. So I have dipped in my pH strip. And you can see we are right in here in the 8, 9, and 10 range, which is perfectly fine. It is going to continue to cook a little bit at this point. Um, back in the olden days, I did do the zap test. I am not doing that. That is one of the most horrendous things. I used to be so scared. I used to call my husband down to do a zap test. And if you don't know, a zap test is taking just a little bit of that soap like I just did and, and touching it to your tongue. If it zaps you like a battery, which I've never done that, but I can imagine, then it's not fully cooked. Now here's the thing. We stirred this all in together. Even if it wasn't fully cooked, as it starts this cool down process, it's going to continue to cook. But also, it's mostly cooked anyway. So once we put it in the mold, I'm still going to let mine cure out for a couple of weeks at least because I want to evaporate the water out. Now you can use them technically within, you know, right away. Let it cool down and, and uh, cut up and it's still best to wait just for a little while to evaporate water out. But if you can go ahead and wait the extra couple of weeks, two to three weeks, I, you will be happier. All right, so this is cooled down to 180 degrees. I am going to add in my essential oil blend. Today I am using a blend of anise and some orange. So I'm just gonna add this in. There's a little kale and clay there. Mm, it smells so good. Now we're letting it cool off so that it doesn't over um, evaporate the essential oils. Now that this is not being heated, anytime I scrape those edges off, they're going to be a little bit crusty. So I actually prefer not to get too wild with the scraping part. I just want to make sure that's blended in really well before I start molding. So I'm putting the soap down in the bowl now. This is one of my most favorite spoons. I used to use it back in the olden days. Came with the um, with my slow cooker. I just love it. It is so handy, and I just feel so like old school here. So I'm just getting it in for starters and I'm going to smack it down really well
I did add sodium lactate to this batch to help it a bit, but I did not use just an excessive amount of water. So I do believe that's showing here. So I'm just kind of rubbing the soft part off. Try to get this a little bit more even here. I'm definitely cooling quickly. All right, I'm gonna give us a good smack down. So you can probably see that that is quite hard at this point. I will scrape those all together and smush them, but I want a little smoother top, so I'm just gonna take some of that off there. Okay, so I'm gonna use my gloves and I'm gonna press it down a bit. This is a bit narrow. The plus side, when it comes to cleaning this slow cooker insert and all of the tools that has the cooked soap, it comes with its own soap. So you can probably see right here, this one is, this is definitely really hard and a different texture. But I'm basically just trying to smooth it out. It's very kind of poofy feeling, but very hot, but it's not so hot that it's uncomfortable to touch with my gloves on. I do like to press the edges, the sides I should say, down just a bit. The sides tend to want to move up a little. It's very hard on those edges. So that's about it. There's nothing much more to show for this at this point in the game. Just going to let it remain in the mold and do its thing. And I will probably cut it tomorrow. Alright, so it's time to unmold and cut my hot process soap is gotten nice and creamy looks quite nice it's a little bumpy extremely hard so I thought you might like to see the unmolding since this was a little bit of a special batch this time that tape, tape is stuck half the time you can't get the tape to stick until you got something going on and want to Show it coming off and this sticks like crazy. That's how you guys can see here. A little different setup. My light is quite bright. Well that just came out so delightfully. So my little pieces at the end are just just a little piece all by itself. You can see it's a little air pockety. Now, I wanted to make a point. And my point is this. This was me making hot process soap for the first time after like eight or nine years. I used reduced water I did use sodium lactate, but there are other tricks that you can use. You can um, super fat at the end. I just put my whole, all the oils together from the get go, but you can pick a certain oil you want, super fat it at the end. You can add a little bit of like yogurt and milks usually help thin it out a little bit. Um, I wanted reduced water so I didn't have to have it evaporate you know take as long to evaporate the extra water 
In my experience, hot process soaps can get waterlogged very easily, and that tends to be because of adding the extra water to make it a smoother soap. So I just wanted to do kind of what I used to do with my recipe now with reduced water. I'm not saying this is like, you know, the perfect scenario to um, end up with the smoothest so, you know what I'm saying. I'm not saying that this is epically epic and perfect the way I did it this time. It's been a long time. And we've had a lot of um, people come along, like Sharon Johnson, I think her name was, that she came out with a pretty good technique for hot process. I did not order her like little ebook or anything at the time, so I, I'm really not fully aware of what that situation is. Other ways to get the job done. All right, so let's cut this and see how it goes. I just did a regular full-size batch for this one. The texture of hot process soap tends to be a little different, a little bit more modeled. tends to be rougher. It looks like I had a little bit of a variation there in my freezer paper. It does feel like like a bit spongy. I mean the soap itself is not necessarily it's spongy. It's very hard. But I don't know. It's just like the impression I get like on the edges and stuff but it hasn't been out of the mold to completely dry up the edges. Now I'm planning to use uh, these for samples. I'm a little bit behind on the sample front. So I think I will cut some bars, but then I will probably switch out. Definitely more of a rustic look. I'm trying to think here what I it's pretty similar actually if I were to uh, cut it a different way. So I'm just going to go like this. So I guess I'll just cut some sample size pieces. I really wish I didn't have this indentation. I don't have that trouble with making my regular cold process soaps so it must have just been the way I was filling my mold contributed to that but it definitely plays in on the the rustic feel I feel like I would like another full size bar at least. Oh, that one is very much air pockety. So. So there's other ways to help keep a fluid batch. Um, one way was to like use some plastic wrap to help keep the moisture in. When you're working with a video, it can be really difficult to um, well, without doing like a voiceover, you know, and I'm just, I'm not really a voiceover type of a person. Um, so, uh, we do it kind of more, you know, in the moment with you on my videos. So, if I were just doing this by myself, I probably wouldn't have opened it up as much. I probably wouldn't have dilly doddled quite as bit on a occasion as I'm like setting up my camera and going back and forth to make sure I'm in the shot etc. So those are things to keep in mind. So this is just a fun thing to do and it is something that I'm sitting here thinking hmm, I should improve this. Do a better job next time. So that is quite a possibility. So you can see how like a hard piece 
from the edge it kind of dried and cooled too quickly it got stuck right there it's still fine everything's fine with it it's just it became a different texture within that spot different color it's likely what was on the side and since it's white in comparison to what's going on around it I'm guessing that it did not get any of the essential oil blended into that piece of soap it was more of a hardened piece positive and negatives to every different type of making soap. There's going to be people out there that just absolutely master hot process soap and it's almost impossible to tell the difference between cold process and hot process. And then there's people like me that really haven't um, played with hot process on a more, you know, professional status. So I thought it might be fun to show cleaning up some of the soap bars. I'm hoping this camera is not moving too much. It might be. Darned it. So for cleaning up, I didn't even have a planer back in the olden days when I was making these type of soaps. So it can definitely help to smooth things out. Just like any soap, um, even cold process, it really does improve the appearance. If you're not one that likes to use a planer, that's totally fine too. I'm not saying anything against that either, but it will smooth out the edges by using the planer. After the first use or two, it's just going to be the, the same soap anyway. So now I'm just using a vegetable peeler to bevel. I've been using the same one that I've ever used. It just does the job. So these are definitely going to improve with a bit of a cure on the old shelf just to improve their um, hardness. Now I feel like I need to make another batch that's a little bit better to show you that I can do better than this. But the one thing to remember is no matter how long any of us have been doing things, we can always learn and we can always make mistakes and we don't have to be perfect all the time. I'm quite accepting of that scenario. Life is too short to be perfect. Even though I tend to be a perfectionist, I do also believe that. So. I do like to pull it towards me instead of pushing it away. It is most definitely a rustic situation with this batch. Alrighty, well I'm going to call that good. So you can see it really fixed it up from not having any planing or beveling. So here we have my first batch of hot process soap in about eight to nine years. It's been a while. Alright guys, I'll talk to you later.